It's live. Yeah. I would like to welcome Dr. Sumit Kumar from South Korea. Uh, and also I want to welcome uh, Dr. Murugan, scientist Sikri for this session. Now the session is over to uh, chairperson, Dr. Murugan. Thank you, Dr. Loganathan. Uh, it's my pleasure again. Good evening to one and all. Uh, it's my privilege to introduce uh, Dr. Sumit Kumar, who is presently working in uh, Center for Soft and Living Matter Institute for uh, Basic Science in Ulsan. In simple, it's called as UNIST, Ulsan Institute of uh, Science and Technology, Ulsan National Institute of Science and Technology. Prior to this position, he held his postdoctoral fellowship in uh, Seoul National University under uh, Professor uh, Nam Jua Min. In the same institute, he completed his PhD in the Department of Chemistry under the Professor Nam. Uh, to his academic credit, he has contributed more than 15 research articles with the recent uh, contributions in premier journals, namely Nature Biomedical Engineering and Nature Nanotechnology. In this wonderful evening, he is going to talk about plasmonic tools for disease diagnosis and therapy. Uh, Dr. Smith, welcome to the stage, virtual stage. Stage is yours. Please go ahead. Yes. So. Uh... So I cannot share my slides screen. So now I enabled. Enable it, sir. Now I enabled it. Okay. Please go ahead. So now is it okay? Yes. Yes. Please. All right. Just uh, exit into the full screen. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you very much for the nice introduction. Uh, Yes, so uh, myself, Sumit Kumar, I already, he already explained about, about me. So since a decade, actually, I'm working in this fascinating area of research, which is called the nanoplasmonics. And I'm using these small tools for the disease diagnosis and the therapy. So for, uh, first, I would like to give you some brief introduction about my research. Probably you will understand. It's a little bit out of uh, maybe some of your topic. So this nanoplasmonic basically is a unique property of the nanoparticle. It's due to the strong absorption and the strong scattering when they interact to the electromagnetic radiation. So uh, they absorb the light and passes through the radiative and non-radiative decay. So this non-radiative decay, basically it generates the lattice vibration, which produces the heat. So that heat basically you can use for controlling any kind of uh, chemical reactions. And the other one, non-radiative decay, basically uh, so the radiative decay, which is basically very important to generate the uh, collective oscillations of the electron on the surface of the metal. So these electron, basically, we can use it for, for, uh, for kind of enhancing the electromagnetic field on the surface. So to increase the signals in, this, in the Roman spectroscopy and for metal enhanced Roman spectroscopy. And, and this phonon electron coupling basically generate the hot electron. So that hot electron is very important to, to basically catalyze some chem chemical reactions. So that is the beauty of this nanoparticles. It's of course very shining. And, and so this absorption, basically we can control based on changing the, uh, their size and shape and morphology and the compositions of the particles. And that's the beauty of the uh, nano infrastructures. And, and, and so, so I'll give you some of the things what I am doing on. So basically we are working on the changing the morphology of these nanoparticles. We, we use like different compositions we change the nanostructures. So how beautiful is that to see exactly uh, when you are doing some nano engineering and you can directly see from your eyes. So that's the beauty of this uh, nano things. And, and, and we are recently, we are working on the surface chemistry of the nanoparticles too. So based on the desired applications for the biosensing and then the thermostatic applications. So, so that's my major area of research. So, so it's, been, it's been like more than a decade in this area. So, so these are like some of the particles which we use for the disease diagnosis. 
starting from the first, as you can see in the slide, first particle, the gold corona nanoparticles. So it doesn't, it's, it's not corona, it will not hurt you. Don't worry. So, so it's like very solid core, which is the kind of very nano textured on the, on the surface. And as you can see, so there is a nano cavity, which you can put like any kind of Roman reporter and any kind of uh, linker. Uh, so in this particular case, we use the glutathione, which have the direct uh, binding to the reactive oxygen species of the cells. So from by using this particle, we can directly uh, do the real-time assay for the oxidative stress. And based on the measurement, we can calculate uh, the uh, the oxidative stress of the redox level of the cells. And and it, it is known that the cancer cells they have the little higher level of the ROS compared to the normal cells. So basically, in this work, we have differentiated so the between the cancer and normal cells. And another one is the core satellite nanoparticles, and it's also very interesting. So as you can see, it's a nano core of like around 100 nanometer. So we coated the polymer where you can put any kind of uh, any kind of Raman reporter. Here in this particular case, we use the myoglobin, which is a very good Raman reporter and is, is selective for the for the kind of autophagic detection. And and we can we can uh, we can monitor by using this particle uh, through the autophagy. So the real-time autophagy we monitor by using this particle. And the next one is very interesting. It's a nano textured particles. So as you can see, it's a, it's a kind of, it has a very fine textures on, on the surface. So they, they make it facile for penetrating the kind of very difficult environment, even the biofilms and those things. So, and this particle also we used for the, for the diagnosis. And, and the last one is the biometallic nanoparticle. As you can see in this, it has a core of around five to six nanometer, which is very optimum for the size of like uh, the, the enzymes, the real protein. And, and then we coated the platinum on the top of it. And, and we have the enzyme in there inside this pocket. And it's kind of, it has a very good oxidase and peroxidase activity. So we used it for the LFA, the lateral flow assay and detected the virus from this work and the glucose too. So, so these are uh, some of the uh, small nano particles which we used for the disease diagnosis. And the next I will, I will introduce what are the particles we use for the disease treatment. So the first one is a core petal nanostructure. It is a very hard core and of the size of around 20 to 30 nanometer. And then we grow the long petals on the surface of it. And, and this petal basically is very important because uh, it's, it's a kind of like two different area. So one area is basically connected to the, to the, to the laser so that you can directly remotely activate the, the catalytic reactions even in the, in, the, in the simple cells, inside the cells. And another particle, which is like pyramid shaped nanoparticle, it has the sharp edges due to that it has a very high photothermal and photodynamic properties. So, so we selectively kill the cancer cells uh, by using these particles. And the next one is like, it is a very kind of organelite type of structure. We use the very specific chemistry to make the kind of this bilayer, uh, the metal bilayer nanoparticles. And we can, it's a hollow particles. We can, we can put any drug inside of it and we can activate inside the cells and we can synthesize any kind of biomolecules. And that's what we did in this work. And, and the next one is the nano star. So, so it's nano star is also very beautiful. So which has the very sharp edges and uh, very thin edges. So which can uh, selectively go to the cancer cells and can kill directly kill the cancer cells. So we did some therapy, the lysosomal therapy by using these particles. So these are the some kind of recent work what I have done in the last couple of years. So now I will give you the very different things. So these are the morphology what we could change and now I will take you to the surface chemistry, what we have done in the recent work. So this is the work which we did. So it's published in Nature Nanotech recently. It's a targeted crystallization of the mixed charge nanoparticle in the lysosome induced selective death of the cancer cells. So it's a very interesting finding. Uh, finding. I, I will explain you how is it. So, so in this case, we started with a very simple nanoparticle of the size of around five to six nanometer. And uh, by changing the surface ligand, actually, so the ratio of the ligand, we can basically vary the, the zeta potential and the surface charge of this nanoparticle. And, and by tuning the surface charge of this particle, we can take this particle to selectively to the cancer cells. And, and, and so, of course, there is no selectivity in the cellular uptake of the cells, but so when uh, the particle come to at the uh, low pH, they start aggregating. 
and they selectively aggregate into the lysosomes and and like cancer becomes like so much greedy of the gold and they take so much gold so that they cannot basically secret uh, they cannot excrete this gold nanoparticle from the cells and and it's the kind of busting of the lysosomes and cells die i'll show you the some of the interesting results so as you can see on changing the ph we could see the big clusters here and this is the size of the lysosomes uh, in the cancer cells and that was increasing comparable to the normal cells and and so this is like it's a pretty, pretty low resolution but you can see here so in case of the cancer so ht1080 is the cancer cells where you can see like the optimum concentration of the mixed nanoparticle which is kind of pretty toxic selectively for the cancer cell compared to the normal cells so so i will show you uh, so uh, actually we were very interested why it is happening so we tried to take the mechanism of this things uh, we could not really kind of bring something new out of it but we try to find the explanation uh, so here basically when the particle were going through the endocytosis so they started coming to the multivesicular bodies and at the some time uh, some points when they uh, the next step they mixed to the lysosomes and started aggregating and this is the critical step when the lysosomes come to the lysosomes the lysosomes big vesicles because at that time at the point so the uh, this autophagosomes they started attaching on the surface of the lysosomes and increasing the ph of the of these lysosomes that make it unstable these lysosomes and at one level they started busting so this the kind of like different mechanism comparable to the normal cells so in the normal cell case basically it goes to the autophagy and a cell easily can secrete so the size of the clusters in the lysosomes become smaller as the time passes in the case of the normal cells so so that's the finding i'll i'll show you so this is the the, the left one is the uh, control uh, the red one uh, you can see is the lysosomes are moving and in the right, uh, in the right figure the red one is aggregating so as you can see the lysosomes and nanoparticles this is the control and this is the, with our particles as you can see the lysosome size is increasing as the time is passing with our particles so that's the like different things that we could, we observe in case of the in case of uh, our mixture nanoparticles so you can see like the slowly the size of the lysosomes are are increasing so so that was like the different observation uh, so this is the case of the mef cells and now i will explain you the cancer cells so look at this so so see that this is like freely moving in this case the lysosomes but at contrast here look at the lysosomes it started bigger and bigger and at some level the this become like completely busting so that was the reason of lysosomal induced cell death so so we because the nanoparticle uh, we could observe it from the uh, dark field microscopy too so we wanted to quantify this this cluster amount so we took it to the to the a dark field study so so every uh, i think you guys know when the nanoparticles they come uh, close to each other they scatter the light and this the scattering color is very much dependent on how close they comes and how much amount they comes so so when the particles are kind of in a small clusters it becomes like green and uh, and and as they are increasing in the size of the cluster it becomes like super bright 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 and at some level they got busted at the same level in the normal cell case we could see like this size of the clusters is not increasing for 24 hours so so at after their cell start excreting uh, excreting this nanoparticles out so there was a difference between the cancer cells and normal cells of take off this mixed charge nanoparticles so we can see like by tuning the surface charge of the nanoparticle is really impact uh, on the behaving of the cells response so so that's like the new finding which we published recently and this paper uh also got accepted as a cover article this uh, this image i took from the dark field microscopy and as you can see the in the lysosomes uh, the big cluster so we call it crystallizations of the nanoparticle inside the cells so it's a beautiful lattice structure formed inside the lysosomes of this nanoparticle so uh, in the next work so uh, we uh, we are working on some kind of bi bilayer nanoparticles which has the metal nanoparticle on the surface and this is also and we did some kind of biomolecular reactions to synthesize multiple molecules inside the cells and outside of the cells i'll i'll show you so so uh, for the synthetic 
procedure we used very noble procedure here we started from the hollow silica and we coated with the polymer and that polymer helps to nucleate the nanoparticles and that can grow the size in the size based on the amount of the precursor and we can we can kind of like insert any kind of uh, and um, other metals like for uh, for example in this case we insert the platinum in this pocket so basically we can plasmically activate this catalyst so it's very much resembled to the organoid type of structure and and it's kind of very beautiful i'll show you we did like a lot of organic chemistry from the dehydrogenation reaction alkali reactions and cg mero coupling and and so so these are like kind of of course i'm not going to in the detail of the data of the raman spectroscopy but so we use the here the raman thermometry uh, to exactly measure the local temperature of the substrate of the each nanoparticle around it and it has very broad absorptions into the near air range so this is a beauty you can remotely activate this particle without hurting the tissue so we took this kind of uh, this uh, work is uh, accepted recently into the angiomanthi chemi and and uh, as a cover image too and we extended this work to like uh, on the different topic so where we can we could catalyze the reaction into the real time uh, into the real time catalyzer inside the cells oh, sorry so you can see like uh, you can remotely activate basically the drug inside the cells you can synthesize the drug inside the cells so here uh, uh, so the selective part of the cells you can irradiate with the laser and you can synthesize the drug in particular area of the cells so that was the beauty of this nanoparticle where you can area specific you can activate without hurting the other cells so that was selectively we could get it so this work is also accepted as a cover uh, cover page and uh, the next work is very interesting for you it's like kind of very fancy work uh, we started this work as like kind of in the fun and we were not like thinking that we will publish this work but it becomes like one of the famous paper of my of my whole life i think so it's a fidget spinner for the point of care diagnosis for the uti so so this is the small toy which we used here uh, you can see like it has a small microprotic channels inside of it Uh, I'll show you. So, so this is the this is the toy, and where you can put the urine samples here, and that can when you will uh, it's, it's a centrifugal mic microfluidics. When you will rotate it like a couple of times, this sample will get filtered, and it, the bacteria will get enriched on this membrane. And by changing the color of the membrane, we can directly see so see the quantity of we can quantify the bacteria. so that's what we did in this work and we used the plasmodium nanoparticles to in their case plasmodium nanoparticles which are selected to the e coli and that will attach to the bacteria and by changing the air color intensity we could directly detect this so so like i'll i'll show the video how we how we perform this yes. so it's a urine sample which you can put in into the fidget spinner uh, this one and yeah and after that you just rotate it uh, one time for the strong people and two time for the weak people yeah like this the complete point of care device you can use it in any village so you don't need any skilled worker or something by changing the color we can directly detect the amount of bacteria yeah that's it so uh, this work uh, we did uh, so some of the study for the patient study real patient study we did in in hyderabad in in some village hospital and and uh, so this work uh, just published last month and and we didn't have yet uh, so we sent the cover and scott selected uh, but not yet accepted in the final list so yeah and now i'll take you to the very entire uh, entirely new journey for me because i never worked on the exosomes exosomes i think is like in a very new field for me uh, since i joined here in the new place uh, in last three years so it's, it's a kind of very uh, interesting thing I, I'll, i'll i'll tell you i'll give the introduction so so we published couple of papers on this topic and so, uh, so it, it was first discovered long time back in 1970 and uh, for like more than 20 years people considered that as a garbage of the cells and nobody wanted to study the garbage 
and and then after the finding of antigen on the surface and some of the genetic material inside of it people got their interest and and so then the people kind of started digging as now like kind of very important cellular marker so it has all the information where it is originated from and it's like it was known from the long time that cells they have the conversation from each other and they so they they have some language but it was it was not known that how do they talk so basically exosomes may be their language and 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 if you want to know more about the cells it's very important to know the their language so so i wanted to really study what exactly is it and what kind of markers is present on this small vesicles so so it's like small vesicles uh, which are basically generated from the fusion of multi vascular body to to this the plasma membrane of the cells it comes out from the cells and it's like Uh, in is in a huge quantity is like 10 to power 7 10 to power 8 vesicles are coming uh, with, within an hour so so we can have the, all the information of the cells so that was my interest on so uh, i was asked like uh, in the center i was asked uh, can you develop some kind of diagnostic tools for for the for the sensing of the cancer for the detection of the cancer so uh, i i never worked on this vesicles so i was just taking the the literature how we how we can work on that which kind of markers is available on the surface and i checked like the platelets you no know, human platelets so th- they are kind of they have the very unique property to interact uh, the cancer cells they have some specific markers which helps the tumor cells to come out from the tumor and survive into the blood stream during the metastasis when the the cells come out from the tumor it survive into the blood uh, before reaching to the their destination so so during that the platelets they cover this this kind of uh cancer cells and definitely they have some specific marker so i wanted to use that kind of uh, knowledge for for exactly cap- capturing the exosomes so so uh, in literature when i checked uh, professor liang fang in ucst he was working on the real membrane and their interactions to the cancer cells and 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 uh, detection of the path- pathogen binding and those things so so i just uh, kind of talked to them and and they they were very interested in developing the diagnostic tools for for uh, really for the cancer and and for the prostate cancer so i worked on this field and and basically we uh, just collected the blood from the fresh hum- fresh blood from the human and we separated the platelets and then we sonicated so to to kind of get the membrane of the substrate so basically we remove everything from inside uh, from the free stem method and sonicate it to turn to into the small vesicles of the size of around around 50 to 100 nanometer and then we completely merge to the to the to this kind of microbiotic chip the small chip and so on the one side it was completely covered with the membrane and 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 if you inject the the plasma samples of the patient plasma sample from the other side you can directly kind of capture the the exosomes but one of the major problem was how will you see that because uh, if you use any kind of fluorescence assay so the major issue is so uh, it's like of the size of around 100 nanometer you cannot detect it uh, from the fluorescence so we thought like why don't we use the plasma ring nanoparticles on, instead of any fluorescence marker so we used like the the dark field microscopy to exactly look at the single exosome level and and so so these are like some some the um, how we did it first we separated the blood Uh, first we get the blood and then plasma and then we characterize the platelets the reactivation level oops yeah the reactivation levels and then we characterize the the vesicles and the diameter and gw potentials the fusion so each vesicle was kind of like completely dispersed into the solution and then we modified into this glass chip and that glass chip basically uh, we characterize the the uniformity by the salicylic cell, uh, acid marker and we uh, exactly look uh, the the marker which um, which were expressed for especially known for interacting to the cancer cells they were present on on, on the chip and we characterized them cd41 cd62 p and cd61 and uh, yes uh, then we synthesized the all three different kind of nanoparticles the gold uh, uh, so gold nanoparticles uh, which is which is scattered the green light into the diaphragm microscopy and the red uh, nanoparticles which is like kind of the gold nano rod so they have the very kind of different absorption spectra that's the beauty of nanoparticles and the blue which is the silver nanoparticles they scatter the blue light under the dark field microscopy they have the entirely very different absorption 
So we use them, and uh, as we can see in the first case, so these are the exosomes binding on the membrane, which we characterize from the SEM. And then we look at the dynamics track, and we track them, their binding on the substrate. And that was the, the super fast, within 30 minutes, we could see that they were bound to the, directly bound to the, here the BPN basically is like, uh, is the control, uh, which is IgG, and this RPN, GPN is the exosome selective antibody, consolidated nanoparticles. So here we can say it's like control is completely, uh, there's no signals out of it, but the green and red, we have the very nice signals. And but when we are injecting all the particles together into the, into the you know, microfluidic chip, we could see very sharp uh, light scattering on the chip. And the, 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 we quantify them in terms of RGB values and, and we could we could see the diff their difference into the plasma samples. And first we spike the sample into the PBS, then we did into the plasma samples. So that was working for the plasma samples too. And here in this case, we were we were focused on the prostate cancer, but uh, then we took it to the another another different kind of cancers for the breast cancer and metastatic, non-metastatic cancers. So so that was working almost for uh, like four different kind of cancers too. So, so that was kind of the beauty of this plated membrane. So, so it's like, and the binding was very, pretty strong actually, because it's a multifaceted binding. It's not like single antibody based. So in this case, we, we did the real patient samples for the more than 10 cancer patients of the level uh, three and two. And we could see, we could easily clearly differentiate the, the, the amount of RGB intensity for the, for the cancer patient compared to the normal patients. And the cancer progressions is also, we could see in a very a small, starting from very small size of tumor to the big size of the tumor. Even the 100 micrometer tumor, we could detect it from this simple chip. And so when I was working on this area, so because uh, I just found like very beautiful things and this exosomes basically uh, is, is good for the other people, but when you are when you wanted to use it for, for some other purpose, you need definitely, the, the major issue is the stability of the surface. And how will you fossilize these exosomes? So that's another problem. So in our case, we that was a like very serious problem. As a chemist, I thought like we should give the solution of this issue. And uh, so uh, there was like one chemistry, uh, which is doubled from Professor Messer Smith, the tannic acid chemistry, which tannic acid is a, uh, tannic acid is a small molecule which basically makes the supramolecular complex with the iron, and you can coat it uh, on any kind of substrates from this by just supramolecular complex formation. So, and this coating is basically the pH dependent coating. So here we we use this microfluidic chip and and. Uh, we basically, uh, the problem was, why did we use, I will explain you in the next slide. So in the one solution, we basically use the tannic acid and the other solution, we increase the pH and in a small droplet reactor, we can coat the very uniformly, uh, this exosomes. And tannic acid is kind of pretty stable uh, under the UV radiation. So I'll show you. So actually when we were doing this reaction in the bulk, we could see like this, this is a very fast aggregation is happening. And, you cannot put uh, like this from this kind of chemistry in the bulk solution. So this, that was the reason we used like small chip. And uh, so so here in this case, we used uh, this microfluidic device with the, the T Jensen uh, where, where you could see the droplet uh, was mixing and the reaction was very fast in less than one second. In the bulk chemistry, the major problem is the radiation was happening in 20 seconds with the low pH is kind of is a bigger issue for the exosome stability. So that was the reason we use this droplet reactor to perform this chemistry. And yes, so, so this is the exosomes which you can see this is the TM images of the exosomes and after the coating, after the protecting with this supramolecular complex, you can see like the thick layer on the substrate on this exosome, single exosomes and this the thickness of this uh, polymer is around 9.4 nanometer. And uh, so basically by just tuning the pH, you can directly remove this this uh, uh, this coating. So whenever you want, you can get the sample back. That's the kind of like tannic acid uh, chemistry. So uh, we characterize the supramolecular complex formation uh, by the different chemistry, by the just naked eyes the, from the Roman spectroscopy, by the changing the zeta potentials after coating and before coating. And there was a, some difference in the size. 
of course we were getting some kind of bigger aggregation during this reaction but still we could recover the the rna and everything so here we just calculated the number of particles which we could recover from the from this so uh, basically the ub treatment uh, we we showed the application for the with the with the U, after the ub treatment and and so so when we were uh, treating the ub uh, with the exosomes without coating they were pretty unstable and the, the concentration of the exosomes was completely gone but in the case of the protected one the ev survived for long so 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 basically so so ev can survive even under the uv exposure of the different power and and the next is like uh, the problem actually this problem was started when uh, by mistake in the first project i left my sample on the desk and next day when i checked the concentration that was pretty low so that was the reason i started this project and so here you can see like the concentration of the exosome particles was going low as you are leaving the samples on on the room temperature uh, so around 37 degree so the so that's like very serious problem so but in the protected exosomes case you can see like the number of particles was pretty constant and we calculated the protein amount and everything so that was kind of uh, is like nicely matched with this data and also the genetic information so that was kind of kind of surviving in the case of the protection and the during the ph switching that was also kind of uh, we could see the nice genetic information in the, on the each exosomes and the each mar marker on the um, they were also stable during the ph switching so so these are the tm images when you irradiated with the uv you could see like the membrane was disrupted but when in the case of the armored exosomes we call them armored exosomes is protected one so these exosomes were pretty stable and even after uv treatment and storage so then we thought like the another issue was how would you modify the their surface because these days people are using a lot for the for the therapy and it's a very good alternate for for the liposomes and the nanoparticle so it's because it's natural and it is a kind of like very good survival rate into the blood and somehow it's like passive targeting too it has some markers which can can be used for the targeting so so dr sumit sorry for the inter uh, interruption uh, next 5 minutes Uh, okay yeah so so these are some specifically uh, you can tune the ph and you can remove the the layer of this uh, this uh, tannic acid and you can fossilize the the nanoparticle on their surface so we wanted to show that the surface fossilization is possible and here we showed that from the glutathione nanoparticle modification and and so so these are the exosomes where we can modify the nanoparticle we can see them under the dark field microscopy and 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 basically the cellular uptake was also very very good and when they are uptaken the this 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 coating was gone due to the low ph and this we we kind of see them in from the uh, under the dark field microscopy and the cellular uptake during the cellular uptake these nanoparticles got kind of like separated from the exosomes and as well as we could do the reflection imaging of this nanoparticle so that was like the single exosome visualizations uh, inside the inside the cells so we are using this for this uh, this work for the in vivo assay so so yeah that's kind of like the subjective project which we are doing presently and and yeah so this is my group uh, uh, this is my team which i'm working i'm really thankful to ibs institute of basic science they have like wonderful uh, facility of the research and professor steve grenick uh, who is guiding and professor chu and professor barthos yeah so they are super people and so they like some of the medical tools which we are using for separating the plasma and kind of detecting the antigen pathogens because this is like the super time for the people when they have their interest in the diagnosis so people can use like this kind of small tools and they can integrate the nanochemistry inside of it and they can basically use this kind of things on on the point of care devices so that's like what i want to explain so so like it's a simple disk and which is the small channels inside of it and you can directly use the cd player simple and you can rotate it and if you put like plasma here you in here you, anything you can enrich here so and then you can use any detection solvent so so this like kind of unique things which we are doing here playing with the nano things with the microfluidic channels so so yeah that's like the very close to the translational research so so that's like the difference between the research which we do in the lab and which we do in the company so already we uh, we have patented our things and and we have uh, one relevant company so lab on chip and and we are working on lab spinners to the other company so you can 
check the product on there. Thank you very much. Uh, so I'm now open for the question. Yeah, I'm done. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kup, uh, Sumit Kumar. It was an excellent talk and a uh, nice presentation compiling uh, animations and video of your research work. Excited to see all those uh, results. Uh, there are uh, still uh, more than 530 participants uh, listen to your talk and uh, keep on raising uh, questions more than 25. Uh, I tried to compile uh, all the questions uh, uh, which will benefit uh, most of the participants. Uh, mm -hmm. Just a basic question, uh, why we have to go with bimetallic nanoparticle rather than uh, monometallic? Is that really has synergistic effect? If so, what would be the adverse uh, effect? Yeah, actually, uh, in particular, I tell you that actually there are like so many cases, but uh, in our case, what we were using, I just uh, I will show you the bimetallic nanoparticles. Mm, so this is so this is the particle which is the biometallic here. Uh, I'll show you. So these two are the biometallic nanoparticles. In this case, we started from the from the iron texturing, and then we grow the copper uh, cobalt nanoparticles on the substrate. So basically, they have the different lattice. So they are very in amorphous in the in their crystal in the, in their structure. So they have their unique property without kind of mixing to each other. And this property basically you, you can use it for the cascade process. Like the one enzyme, can, one particle can play the role for the oxidase activity, and another one can can work like as a peroxidase activity. So you can couple these two things. So for the enzymatic cascade reactions, it's very important to get the, this kind of combination. And like for for this gold platinum case, the so gold everyone knows this like colorometric things are more here and it interacts to the light more. But the platinum, the beauty is more catalytic. So basically, you can enhance the catalytic property by using the laser. So okay. the basically this photothermal heating can help it. Okay. So uh, uh, what about the degradation rate of these nanoparticles in line with the pathway of uh, cell internalization? Actually, particular this particle uh, uh, we wanted to use. So there was a project of the LG chemistry, uh, LG Chem, and uh, we scale up this particle to like very uh, kind of milligram scale. And uh, the major issue with this, the stability was very good. Like we uh, we compared for like two years till two years. But the problem was they were using for the fuel cell and the highly acidic situation, uh, highly acidic condition. So this particle got aggregated in the highly okay. acidic conditions. So, yeah. But uh, if it is like at the pH seven or like pH five, then it was okay for long. Okay. So another uh, couple of questions were related to that uh, fit get uh, spinner. So uh, if uh, the rotational speed is increased or decreased, uh, will it affect the agglomeration or uh, immuno complex of that uh, bacterial uh, uh, colonies within the device? Uh, so basically, we are not growing the bacteria. It's instant detection within 60 minutes. So, mm -hmm. so bacteria which are kind of on the membrane, it's the porous membrane of nanocellulose membrane. It's the cheapest material. We can use it. So, so uh, it's a, the porosity is around 200 nanometer. So bacteria, you know, it's around like one micron, the E. coli and SOS. So, but so it will uh, it will be on the top of it. So the force which which we are using for the fidget spinner is kind of okay for holding it this bacteria on the surface. Yeah. Okay. So another question is related to again the membrane used in the spinner. Uh, is it possible to reuse? Of course, you mentioned the cost of the entire device is less than. Uh, say $1 uh, when we compare to USD or uh, uh, other uh, currencies, uh, will it be possible to, uh, I, I think you answered it, right? Cheap uh, means it's, it's yeah, possible. Reusing is not possible. Okay. Reusing is not possible, yeah. So one question, I'm adding my uh, question in, uh, in this uh, Fitget uh, spinner. So mm -hmm. you have tested uh, one strain model E. coli, right? So how do you uh, respond for a polymicrobial uh, infection? Yes, yeah, so for the, for the, that's the problem actually. We need, because we wanted to make it cheapest. So here we were using the WST dye, which is kind of for all kind of bacteria. If you want to make it selective for the bacteria, you have to modify the antibody on the substrate and with the nanoparticles. So, so that's like we are extending this to there. And we are using the nanoparticles uh, specifically for the particular bacteria, and we can detect it. We have showed like a couple of results out of it, but uh, we can extend it to the AST level. We can test the drug and other things.
Yeah. Oh, sorry. So, so I think the session is ended because of the uh, time, right? Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anyways, uh, if uh, convener permit, I will uh, ask one question. Otherwise, we can collect the questions and uh, send you uh, separately, sir. Uh, it's over yeah. to Dr. Nathan. No, sir, please ask. Uh, go ahead, sir. We have our two, three, yes, two, my, three. my question was related to polymicrobial detection. Please, your comment, please. Oh, yeah, yeah. So what I'm saying, like, uh, for the polymicrobial detections, basically, you have to use the specific antibody. So mm -hmm. that you can modify on the nanoparticle substrate and you can wash them after mm -hmm. fertilizing, then you can see the color changes. But in this in this work, we did not highlight that. We just use the WS with a simple dye, which can make the different color for all kinds of bacteria together. Okay. But we have done the AST on the uh, after asking the reviewers. So okay. that's just what the simple sheet. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, nice presentation. Congratulations. Chincha presentation. Kamsa Amnida. So, oh, thank you, thank you. You still did not forget the Korean. <laughs> I, I'll try to recollect. Uh, so, uh, thank you very much for sparing your valuable time with us. Oh, thank you. Over to uh, convener uh, Dr. Loganathan and uh, Dr. Sudhakar. Yeah. Thank, you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sumit Kumar, for your excellent uh, presentation uh, and also for explaining your result on uh, various point of care devices. Uh, thank you very much. And also, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Murugan uh, for uh, chairing this session. Uh, and also, uh, we are in on time. Uh, so, this session, uh, almost 550 participants attended. The next session is immediately starting. So, I want to give an instruction to the participants. So, the participants, please uh, rejoin again after the closing this session. Please rejoin using the same link. The next session is starting at 6.5. Uh, six, uh, six uh, sorry for the completely packed schedule. Um, so many, many interesting topics are uh, still there. Please join us in the next session, next technical session. Now we are, we are, we are closing the session from here. Yeah. Thank you, Thank you all. Thank you.